Hello, my name is Michael Avery from Cadence Design Systems. I'm going to talk about SVA disjunction properties. A disjunction property is just an OR. So it's an OR of two property expressions. And here shows an example. Each property expression in this case is of different length, which is perfectly fine. Or they could be the same length. This property here that we've asserted would succeed where either or both of those properties hold. So it's not mutually exclusive. One or the other. That's, that's why we call it an OR. And that success of the property is either vacuous or non-vacuous, so clearly any property with implication passes under two circumstances. Here, for this expression on the left of the OR operator, if B is true and C is true the next cycle, that's a, that's a non-vacuous pass. If B is false, that's a vacuous pass. So there, what I describe as this initialism kind of properties, why would you ever want to do that? So I would never use these myself because they're of no practical use as far as I can see. So why do I say that? Well, the disadvantages are they complicate coverage analysis, you know, which one of the properties completed non-vacuously. If the property is asserted and fails, then I need time to understand in which one failed, which one of the two. It could be both did. Informal, if the property is asserted and passes, I don't know whether the expression expressions will always pass non-vacuously without more effort and risk. We're going to do this by defining coverage perhaps, but the, the it's really a mute point because you'd never use this in the first place. Because informal, what you're trying to do is decompose the problem into simpler parts so that the proof will run quicker, not the other way around, which is what all or does. If we've got a chance of defining behavior using one property or a equivalent behavior using more than one property, then you always choose the multiple property approach because this means you can run them in parallel and then further improve runtimes. So the overall question is a, is a really you know a fundamental one is that why would we ever say that one property expression is allowed to fail? You know why would we write an, assert an assertion a property about it if we saying it's acceptable for it to fail? So t to me it doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. Now, unlike the property and, you cannot define easily a set of properties which are equivalent to a property or. So normally what people intend when they're using this kind of thing is, is they, they misunderstand that a sequence or and a property or are not the same thing. So there is a sequence or operator which allows success of one sequence or the other or both. And this is normally what people intend. So this is not equivalent to the or that we had previously, by the way. Just go back here. I'm not saying that's equivalent to this, it's not, because as I said, the, it's non-trivial to express that. Uh, but this is the kind of thing people normally mean. If we have B or D on the left-hand side, then this implies we see either that sequence C or this sequence E followed by F. That's normally what people meant. Okay, so there are two different kind of operators or operators which are the same keyword. So this is a sequence or, the one on the previous slide is a property or. Advantages, uh, literally and objectively, I've never seen a single advantage of doing this since it's been in the language, which was the very first release of the language reference manual. Unless you think having a single property is an advantage, and if you do, then I, I would disagree with you, I'm afraid. Here's an example of a success of such a property. This is known as a witness, and we can get Jasper tool to show this to us automatically. Note that in this case, what it's done is, as we might expect from a formal tool, it's shown us the shortest way in which we can get success of that property, which is B followed by C. Note that D, E and F don't even get plotted because they're irrelevant for this property passing. In this waveform here, in visualize, any time that the signal is shaded green, that means it's required to be true in that cycle. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. Uh, thanks for listening and goodbye.